Welcome back, Ashley Knuckle Faithful. Checking in. Got B Woods. That's me. Uh, what's up, Mo? What's up? Mark, what's good? What's up? Been a minute. And my boy, Jar, what's happening? What's up, B Woods? We got to We're going to recap the last card. Talk a little bit about the BMF title. We'll talk a little bit about Kevin Holland moving from welterweight to middleweight. A little bit about the uh, heavyweight title picture and roster. And then maybe a little bit about the light heavyweight bout with uh, Alex Pereira. Maybe controversial decision win. We'll see what everyone thinks about that. But, um, you know what? Let's start there. How about that? Let's start at um, the 205. Uh, we saw Alex Pereira make his uh, overtime, make that 205 debut. Hey, you know, he, uh, he's ranked number three now. Yeah, he jumped all the way up. I mean, rightly so as a former champion. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And that division's shallow, so I don't, I mean, who did he jump over? Everyone, Jan, Rackage, Krylov. Walker, Smith. I mean, he beat Jan, who was the former ranked number three, and he's a previous champion. So. Well deserved. Well, yeah. Fair and enough. Jan's older, too, so he's probably got maybe a couple years left. Um, Rakic hasn't fought in forever. Anthony Smith is on his way out. He's going to be a commentator. Um, who else we got? Johnny Walker looks to be uh, ascending, though. Yeah, I I think Johnny Walker's mediocre in a shallow division. Yeah. In all honesty, that's, that's two hundred five, man. Two hundred five is it's thin. I mean, outside of um, wait, wait, you got what? Krylov? Wait, did they ever resign? Um, was the 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 guy who had the controversial win versus Blahovich? The draw, uh, Ankalaev. Ankalaev, is he still with the UFC? He's scheduled yeah. to fight Walker he's next. Fight like he's fighting who? Johnny Walker. Walker. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. I mean, I think those two guys are... And maybe you go with uh, Yuri, Jamal Hill. There's probably like maybe six guys in that division who are even worth talking about. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, are they even worth talking about? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I mean a healthy Yuri, um, and then a healthy Jamal Hill, they're worth talking about. Uh, Johnny Hendricks keeps on this path and continues to get better, and, you know, he's worth talking about. Um, Johnny Walker. Of course, uh, not, uh, jo- not Johnny I say Johnny <laughs> I mean, he could be a 205. Johnny come back. If he come back, he has to be a 205. He'll probably be a heavyweight with the steakhouse still open. <laughs> uh, yeah, Uncle Ive is worth talking about, especially, you know. Hey, I mean, he's, he's really good. Rackage can, you know, we can, if he gets, he's healthy and mixing it up, he's worth it. But the division itself is, like he says, it's kind of shallow. There's not a ton of talent. It's extremely shallow. Yeah, so you got, <laughs> yeah, and you the got top. top six and then, well, I don't even count Krylov as part of that. But uh, if you go top seven and minus Krylov, there you go. You got six people that's worth talking about. And then you got a whole bunch of might have a good fight, like Roundtree or Menemfield. Yeah, it's right. not, nothing to run home about. Right. They have a, their top ten is um, a, a legit top ten as far as 205 is concerned. But there's maybe a handful of guys who we who would be competing for the title. The rest of the guys are just card fillers. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think- see any headliners other than nah. maybe Pereira. Even then, it's only because of his like he's not like a to me he's not a draw. No, he's a coattail draw off of Izzy. Well, to be honest, we, we, to be fair, we haven't really seen. His potential. And the fact that he got he's he's one one with Izzy, people are gonna wanna see him 
win a new title and then then rematch. So I, I think it's, I think he won a lot with the anti Izzy people and just being able to get that over. Um, so I think he has potential as a draw though because if you if you can become a two weight champ in a year's time, because that's pretty much what it, it will come down to if they have him fight for the title this year, even if it's in January, he'll be a two time champion in a year's time. And that's just insane. I, I agree with that. His, his only way of being a draw is being like the boogeyman, where he's the kind of guy where he, who's running through everybody in impressive fashion, getting crazy knockouts, um, holding the championship by taking the middle or like, he won the middleweight championship, lost it. If he's able to take the 205 championship and have two titles under his belt in a year, yeah, that'll look good. And it'll, it'll be able to sell that scary Alex um, Poetan type mystique. However, he can't talk. So he can't, he won't be able to make. Well, he, he's been he working on that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it, it took, Silver was more scary than he, he ever was. And he never, he was never this huge, like, draw. By his um, right. persona, it was more like his mystique of being the spider. That's what made him a sell. And well, that's, what have, uh, that's what will make Aaron. that's what will make Alex Pereira a sell if he's able to have that mystique of being able to crush folks and look like unbeatable. I don't know if he'll be able to do that, especially if the fights at two hundred five look similar to the John fight. That like, that doesn't look scary. He didn't look like a a boogeyman. He looked like an ordinary fighter versus Jan, and Jan's like um, old, bro. I, I thought a lot of that was the cautiousness from being knocked out last time he was in the ring. So I'm not holding that against him just yet. Neither am I. I'm just saying that if we're gonna, if he's gonna be billed as this like unbeatable, scary character, and that's gonna be his draw, which I agree, I think that's his ticket to be a draw. It has to be more impressive. He has to have knockouts and like finishes, um, or yeah, or these, yeah, a world beater, or high action, high energy type fights where it's must see TV. That wasn't must see TV. Is what all no. I'm saying. That shit was borderline boring. Yeah, it was. It was ass, and it, that's why I don't think the decision was controversial. Um, he struggled in the grappling, which was expected, and Jan's not some. Top tier grappler. He's a striker who who chooses to grapple when it makes sense. And this is, it, it looks bad that you can't even start throwing submission attempts on the guy's back for like the whole round. You know what I mean? Like it just that looks worse to me than you you getting on top of the guy for a round and then him coming back and then out striking you for those two rounds. Well, you know I what I mean? The, I think the out striking parts to be expected. He's a world class mm-hmm. kickboxer. So he's, it's to be expected that he'll outstrike anyone. The, the problem with MMA and with Alex in the MMA career, that was always the worry. What would happen if guys forced him out of that game plan? And we see, we've seen it already. I mean, he's been in some weird spots with Izzy at, a, at middleweight. He's been in some weird spots. Um, he, he had a pretty uh, clear-cut path to the title. He had all favorable matchups. All the guys that were at middleweight were guys who would stand and strike with him. And the guys who weren't, weren't very good at all. Like, they weren't top-tier middleweight talent. I mean, he beat Sean Strickland, who was a striker. He beat a couple other guys. Um, One was mid, and then the other ones were, like, pretty exciting with knockouts. But we're not talking about... He didn't, have a, he didn't have to go through the fire to get the middleweight title. He might just have to go through the fire for 205. So we, we'll, we'll see exactly what he truly looks like at 205. Personally, I'm pulling for him because I, I think he would be fun to watch if he was the scary. He's able to be the scary kickboxer, Alex, in 205 that he was at middleweight. I don't know if they'll, his opponents will allow him to be. Because Jan chose to fight like that. He chose to specifically make it a dirty, slow, grindy fight. Unfortunately for him, he gassed himself out and wasn't able to complete that game plan. But everyone saw, everyone saw that. 
every fighter that's on the roster that's going to be an opponent of Alexis is going to test that until he can prove otherwise. Yeah, I agree. So if every fight from now on looks like that, he ain't scary, bro. And that ain't going to sell. I don't give a shit. And even if he wins the title and it's like that, with his mic skills or lack thereof, with his um, because even like in the in the post game interview when he spoke and had it translated, he wasn't making it seem like he has a a clear cut ambition or some kind of narrative to sell. He's still trying to do it like the the old Brazilian way of you know, like oh, I'll take whatever they give me. I, I we'll see what happens. It's not I want the championship. I want exactly this fight or talk some shit or you know give a sound bite. So I don't think that's going to be – it's not going to be able to sell unless he's Anderson Silva or Jose Aldo or Amanda Nunes where you don't have to talk. You just smoke everybody, and that's the sell. So being in lightweight, though, he he has a favorable route for that because, let's be honest, besides Jan, who else is a grappler in light heavyweight? That's actually a – Bro, I don't see him. I don't see any lightweight in the world beating him. That's what I'm saying. Like he's gonna get a whole bunch of people that are gonna try to strike with him because right. there's no elite grapplers. Period. In light heavyweight right now. Oh, okay. They say lightweight. I'm gonna say who do you? I don't see anybody at lightweight. I probably did say lightweight, but still, light <laughs> light heavyweight. Uh, he, he, <laughs> there's like no other like credited grapplers. Period. Like, Uncle Iev is, like, 29% successful with his damn takedowns. Um, who else are you going to say in there? The, the next best is probably Ryan Spann, but I don't think that he's going to have enough time to take him down before he gets hit, his kit kicked in. So. Yep. I mean, there's, there's some notable ones not in the top 10. Yeah. Uh, but there, there are what, 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 what 205 does have is guys who have a pretty well, well-rounded game. So yes. they might not be excellent grapplers, but they don't have to be because he's not a good one. Mm-hmm. Like, so they, they can just, if they have a training camp focused toward only grappling and stopping, and, and you know, they can uh, um, pull a ton out of his wheelhouse and get, yeah, they, can, they can definitely, uh, there's a, guy, a lot of guys in that division at the top that can pull that off. How long can they pull it off for? Who knows? Will they gas while trying to pull it off? Who knows? Will they get caught while trying to pull it off? Who knows? We're going to find out, though. He does have some energy. He did do all that grappling and still looked like he was decently fresh in the third round. Oh, yeah. And that's, my, that's why I said I have some hope for him, because he can get better. I mean, he, can, he saw that, too. He went through that as well. And just like what happened with Francis when he fought... He made the first time. He learned a lot from that. And the next fight was the worst fight of his career. His fight with Derek Lewis. You know, so like what's gonna happen with Alex? Is he gonna be tentative now and like really scared of guys trying to take him down to where he's frozen and not um taking this and taking his own approach? Because it's not it might not be a direct jump from okay, I know my weakness and now I'm working on it. He might take his take time with that, and if he does, and he ends up getting better at grappling, then now we, now we're talking. I would say you could legitimately say he's already gotten slightly better. Like the difference between his grappling defense against Izzy, I know Izzy's not a world class grappler, but Izzy had more success like keeping him in position than, and Jan kind of took him down, but. Alex wouldn't let him do anything with it. He was defending just enough to not do anything. He couldn't get up, but he was defending enough to where he wasn't getting ground and pound or submission attempts were happening because that's what Jan wanted. He wanted some ground and pound, but he knew if he let up the pressure, he was getting up. So I would say he's already advanced a little bit. He probably needs to increase like his get up a little bit, but other than that, we're good. Oh yeah, and if he's he he's showed a lot of improvement. So if this continues, 
And yeah, I got I got I got high hopes for the guy, man. He, I, I I think he can um, be something special at two hundred five, and even, maybe even maybe even anyway. Who knows? Heavyweight might be uh, stretching it a little bit. How big is he? He's dude. He's huge. He was at least uh, what two twenty nine on fight day for his um his matchup against Jan. That's a, even at even at two hundred five, he has a, a pretty good weight cut. So if if he takes if he puts some size on. Walks around. If he can get so around two thirty ish or two thirty five, two forty ish, possibly then, yeah. Oh yeah, he's tall definitely. enough. Six six, so he'll be in that same range as like, and he's. I mean, he's not a crazy athletic guy. He's kind of slow and lumbering anyway. Mm-hmm. Like um, in his approach, he's not a bouncy, um, very tactical with foot movement type striker. He's more of a plodding forward. Destroyer, so I think he'll be just fine as long as he doesn't run into somebody that is um, more athletic and more um, you know, technically inclined when it comes to footwork. But you he's don't see that striker. Yeah, true. Well, that's that's true. Well, he's um, we if you look at how he even throws leg kicks, it's not a lot of wind up or turnover of the hip. He's just hitting you with his leg. Mm-hmm. That's his way of throwing leg kicks, and then like you look at his, his striking stance, he's wide open to get hit. Like he's he has this like um very he, he's basically he's a kind of like a berserker without the speed. He has this, the body of a tank, but he he kind of leaves himself a little open when it comes to exchanges exchanges, and he's just trying to like. Trade trade one for one, and usually if he lands his, his curtains. Agreed. Yeah, he. I think he has the technicality of it and the power to really go far, but it's just a matter of him getting his grappling high enough to be able to stand up, which I think he did pretty well in the later rounds when Jan was fired. Pretty much when Jan wasn't diving at his ankles, he looked good. Mm-hmm. What about so, so Mo, what do you, what do you, how do you feel? What do you think um, happens now for uh, Alex? Oh, you already know what they're trying to do with the whole Yuri beat Glover. Glover is the teacher of Poetan. You already yeah. know where it's going. You already know where it's going. It's all about the storylines. Remember, they're under the same umbrella as WWE now. Gotta have the stories. <laughs> well, speaking of stories, do you think that affects how fighters are now choosing to take their... What's that? Talking to your you making... You making Robin? Sorry? What are you doing over there, John? <laughs> I'll be in a bottle of water. That was my one. <laughs> nah, I, don't, I don't think the stories are going to be that prevalent with uh, certain fighters, but I think with big fights, they're really going after the entertainment value as they were going with before, but now I think it's going to be a lot more. A lot more extreme? Yeah. I mean... We've seen it already with uh, Poetan and Izzy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was very very pretty big hype, but I think that delivered on the hype as well. We saw Izzy finally get stopped in May, and we saw his redemption arc, which I think the rubber match is important. You know, people on one side say, "Oh, it's three one," but I think it's one one in MMA, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. True. And I think that happens. If um, he does capture the 205 championship, I definitely can see that being a sell for Izzy to move up to 205 and try to be champ champ or a poet time to beat Izzy again at 205 and him to cement his legacy as um, Izzy's uh, 
tonight. For tonight. Hey, he could be the first champion to move down and wait and win a uh, title. Is he? No, 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 no. Poetar. Oh, if he were to huh. gain the light heavyweight title. Oh, you mean he gain the light heavyweight he title and then go regain the middleweight title? Yeah, nobody's done that yet. Yeah, he, he said he wants to fight him at 185 because that's equity. So, yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be fun to, it'd be fun to watch. Um, it'd be interesting to see him cut weight after uh, cut all with eighty five after having some reps at two hundred five, and you know, like having his body adjust to cutting the two hundred five and being at that weight, and then going down to eighty five. That would be really interesting, especially given the fact that like he's already been knocked out. But is he at eighty five? And th- the weight cut was pr- is probably a really big part of that. Outside of right. me just touching him with his right hand on the chin, I mean that's another big part of it. But I think the first thing to go when you have those big weight cuts is probably your chin. All right, guys, we should uh, move forward. I don't know which fight you guys want to get on to real quick, but we should uh, make Derek it kind of quick. Derek Lewis proved us, really reminded everyone why he is where he is and that he is a fan favorite, highly entertaining. All you have to do is, you know, get a few flashy wins and he's got a good life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I I know what it is with Derek Lewis. You want to know what it is? He wasn't the main event. (laughs) That's all it is. As long as he's not the main event, he's good to go. And it's not in Texas. Exactly. Those two things, and you got uh, my balls are hot, Derek Lewis. That, that's who you got. He did a All flying knee. All you got to do is take off his shorts. Yeah, that flying knee, though. What heavyweight does that? Uh, There's one. There's one that'd be doing flying kicks. I forgot his name, though. Yeah, I was about to say, he's about to box in Jacksonville, actually. He's going to box, uh, who's he boxing? Is he boxing? You talking about Verdum? Yeah. Verdum and, uh, JDS, right? Yeah. What's that, September or something? Yeah, it's coming up soon. What's the ticket prices? Are like $20 or something? I, I don't no know. If it ain't expensive, then, uh, I, I might, no I might get that. that. They'll get a dub. That's about it. But, I mean, Verdum throwing them flying kicks right off the bat. He did it in two different fights. Who did he land that on? Travis Brown? Travis Brown and someone in like one of his early, early fights before he was even on the main rosters. All right, so we know where Derek Lewis goes in general with his uh, heavyweight career. He's just going to be that guy that he's going to be another cowboy. You're always going to expect good fights out of him. You're always going to get a good fight, and he's probably going to destroy some people's prospects. At least one or two. Definitely yeah. at least one or two. Yeah, he messed up Curtis Blades. Like, look at his resume. He beat Francis. He beat Curtis Blades. Ah, this is two notable ones, but I know he's got he's got the most knockouts in the UFC as well. So it's like there's there's another one. Who else did he beat that's notable? Oh, Volkov. Volkov. My yeah. balls are hot. And he was a prospect. Yep. Oh, yeah, big one. I think as long as Derek has one knockout every three fights, he's A-OK. He'll be a yeah. great, great card I, filler. I don't even care. Just keep letting him fight. Yeah, I, so that's, I, again, that's the question I was asking, um, I was trying to get to earlier. Do you think with the, the new um, focus on the narrative as opposed to, like, performances – Getting you like um, clean time and uh, main event time. Do you think fighters might take a different approach? Because you see, um, a lot of them, a lot of guys aren't even gunning for the championship. They're just trying to put on exciting fights, build that, build this kind of storyline, and be and make a highlight reel. I think those things are more important now than just winning. I think we might see a change, honestly, with how. Some of these, 
I think eventually they're probably gonna start getting cuts of uh, points, the pay-per-view points. Eventually, stuff stuff's gonna happen, and they're gonna start getting paid elsewhere besides the UFC. I, I think we're gonna incentives or something. I think we're gonna move out of the money era and go into the entertainment era, where they realize that the the championship isn't the only way to money anymore, and. It's all about having a name and having an exciting fights, and that's what gets you the money versus being a champion. Well, the reason I asked that is to segue to the next fight was if you look at the welterweight matchup we had this um, past card where Michael Chiesa, excuse me, ooh, almost got one, almost lost one. Um, Chiesa, t- Chiesa took on Big Mouth and. God, Darsh choked. Mo, Mo, that was crazy that you called that. That was sick. Um, but when he did his post-fight interview, he was talking about moving back to middleweight. And that doesn't make sense for any kind of title um, run when it comes to... Um, I don't know. I don't know the, the success at 205... At, at, he, has some, like, oh, wait, wait, wait. he knocked out Buck, Joaquin Buckley, right? At 85? Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, he has he has some impressive wins at eighty five. However, the the reason we was a move to eighty to seventy was he's not a very big eighty fiver. He's tall and slim and he, and like slim, but he can get ragdoll pretty easily by the top grapplers in um, two hundred five. I mean, sorry, at 85, especially Bo, especially um, if Chimaev comes back and he's, you know, on his game. Those guys. Those guys he already yeah. got wrecked all the time. Right, but that was at 170, right? No, that was a, was a catch that was weight 180. or 180. 180. Okay, so not a catch weight. Yeah, so then, yeah, it, it, there's, there's not a lot of um, – and all the guys at the top of 85, yeah, I don't see him doing anything really – as, as far as like building any momentum off, you know, winning streak going over any of those guys, he might be able to knock off one or two, but that's it. I mean, he was the pandemic king, though. Him and uh, Hamzat, they were like the pandemic kings because he went on that crazy tear during the pandemic during 2020. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he, uh, who's not really a who's who, but he just went on like, I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm fighting. He fought twice in one month. Then turned around and fought like the next month, and then the next month after that, and then two months later he slept uh, Jacare off his back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He he has potential, which is why it's disheartening for him to go up back up and wait. Because if he stays at 170, he has a clear title on that thing. But, Maybe not a clear one, just some hurdles, but it's an easier one than. Wait a minute. Wait. I don't know if that. I don't know if that. Interest him though, is he, he 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 does like you said he has potential. He did he at eighty five he was um really vocal about not being very dedicated to the diet and mm-hmm. the that, and the des- and the things that it took to be champion. I remember him having an interview on Rogan where he was he wasn't even uh, dedicated to you guys the things that would keep him champion. Or what? Oh, the, that noise? That's my dog. She's oh. She won't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, go what you want. Hey, hey, no. Check this out, guys. Holland at 170 has actually fought three solid contenders, and he's 2-1 and one against them, like contenders. Uh, Wonderboy, yes. Pazanibio, who was, before injuries, considered like at least top five for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, Kiesa is... <laughs> It is what it is with him. Kiesa was a great prospect before he became an analyst. I mean, I honestly think that Kiesa just can't balance analyst and a fight career, in all honesty. And I think he should lean more towards the desk, to be honest. It'll give him decent pay. He's a decent analyst, and he doesn't have to get choked out all the time by Darth chokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that a grappler gets has a certain submission that gets him every time. That's funny, right? 
It's kind of like Chill Sun and Triangles. <laughs> yeah, I just I just rewatched his like highlight reel of his, and you would think that a guy that could kick Prime Anderson's ass for as long as he did, twenty four minutes, you would be able to learn how to get out of a triangle. Especially when you've been like every time you lose up until this point has been trying. Hey, I mean, Pride is a motherfucker, bro. Might be too proud to do the work. He didn't know the rules of tapping. All right, he didn't know the rules. Yeah, if you tap, one of the funniest guys. All right, guys, let's uh, talk a very uh, talk about a very heartfelt fight. It hurt my heart to see this man tap out. Me too. And I'm talking about uh, El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. He Wait, hold on. He didn't tap. He tapped out. I mean, he didn't tap he out. out. Well, you know what I mean. Well, he got choked out. He, got he didn't tap out. It hurt, it hurt my feelings to see that. Yeah, that was. I, I did not expect. We don't that even got to talk about it long. The, uh, retire or one more? One and done. I, I don't know. I, I think he should fight as long as he wants. Personally, he didn't look. He he looked kind of back. Okay. In the beginning, when he did his little thing and look, you know, like he looked great to the eye poke. The eye poke. The eye poke is what cost him the fight because that gave it uh, him plenty of time to recover. If, if he didn't do that, and him but referring to Bobby happened. Green, right? Yes. Yeah. If Bobby Green didn't gouge out Tony's eyes. He would have lost. It is what it is, man. But I, I really don't want to see another legend go out on a losing streak like BJ Penn. Uh, who else went on a losing streak before hey, they finally got cut? Well, Almost everyone. Ferguson's hey, on one right now. Uh, Anderson. Anderson. And it was a big yeah, one. Yes. I mean, whoa, 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 wait. He got he got a win against Darren Brunson, right? Right, even but though he's he got basically. fucked up, but hey, you gotta win. It, I think that's kind of. I think that's how it goes. Like once you're out, of, once you're on the way out, you're gonna start getting bodied by the guys who are, you know, they're better than you now because you're on a decline. And I, for I me, like the young me. hungry lions. Yep, I quote and even some guy. mediocre guys who got better, like some guys who were mid, but. They, you know, they're veterans now, so they got that experience, and they're able to put together a game plan and get a victory. I don't know. I, I think in this whole entertainment era, guys like that who can, they're still a name, they're still a, a notable fight. Let them send it. Just go ahead and um, fight until you for like, you literally cannot anymore. I say give them a favorable matchup. Someone like. Moicano, who's both on crossroads, uh, and but but it be his final match. Give him a send off like they did. Um, Robbie what's Lawler. his name? Yeah, Robbie Lawler recently, because he's thirty nine. Man, he's about to be forty. He needs to just cut it loose, man. Well, but the thing that's not that's not how totally good though. I understand. That's how he needs to be. I love that man. That's my boy. Both these guys are my boy. This, this was a hard matchup for me because I love Bobby Green also. But I just think that that's where it's at right now. I think he has enough juice in him to possibly pull out one more win on a favorable matchup and call it a career. And I think Moicano, even if he does pull out the win, it'll be an interesting fight. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Tony's capable of having a boring fight. Correct. So that's that's why I feel the, that's why I said that I think he should fight as long as he wants to. Because what else is he gonna do? Like that's that Tony's that's what he that's his lifestyle. Like that's he's not I mean yeah, he might be able to transition into other things that maybe we don't, I don't know about. But as far as in the cage, there's not a Tony Ferguson fight that gets booked that I'm not interested in. If he goes up against some younger prospects that may, 
or may not be able to take uh, take him out, and it's an entertaining fight. I'm down to watch that. I just don't. Um, I don't know. I, I don't want to see him get like carted off or some shit like that, or be the first MMA death or something like that. But no. At the same, at the same time, I'd rather him go out on his own terms than be forced out. Yeah, I I agree. I think he has, I think he has potential in him for going on a, a like, because he looks really good until that eye poke. And uh, that's that's my standing point is he looked like he was coming back back on. Out of all the fights he's lost recently, he this is the best he's looked. And, that. and he got finished in the best fight he's looked in. Um, even Gaethje couldn't finish him. So it's that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting going forward. And speaking of Gaethje, we got a new BMF. Oh man, uh, I like the uh, transition of that because this is gonna be a very interesting talk because with this title, it makes you wonder. So what happens? With with this is uh Islam and Charles actually booked for Abu Dhabi? Yeah, that's confirmed. Mhm. It's set in stone. Yeah. All right. So with that fight actually happening, Justin Gaethje. He's obviously ranked number two currently. Oliver is number one. We got uh Darius and Chandler at four and five. Poirier at number three. Uh, Rafael Faziev is fighting... Who's he fighting? Gamrot. So you got six and seven fighting. Number four doesn't have a dance partner yet. Chandler will definitely not be fighting Conor McGregor this year if USADA has anything to say about it. But UFC made a lot of money last year. And they made some money this year, so... Something could be happening where some table might be, or not table, but some money be, might be placed under the table, and we might see Connor fighting in December. I'm not saying I heard a rumor or anything, but the internet talks. So true. So where does Gaethje fall into the mix? So, Gaethje is being called out by Connor, and I think Gaethje has the option of, depending on what they do with Islam, right? So, if Islam wins, I think it's very clear cut, Gaethje fights him next. But if they let him sit out another eight, ten months, that might be troublesome for Gaethje. He might want to take the Connor fight to get paid big and then get his title shot. I personally don't think that Gaethje really has any interest in fighting Connor. I I, I just don't I mean, think he that, does. People say that, but that's a lot of money. A, a lot of money. I don't think. On the table. Once again, I think Gaethje is just not the one that's motivated by money. I think Gaethje really just loves fighting and wants a title. He went from just pure love of fighting to wanting a title and now he loves fighting and wants a title but I, I don't think money's ever been his motivation in all honesty and Connor's kind of up there I, I don't know what's going on with Connor's like uh, mentality of fighting I, I know he loves the sport like he truly does but is his head in the game no Watching him Maybe. on Ultimate Fighter, it shows it, variables with it. It's all something else. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if somehow Dustin Poirier is going to sneak into a third, fourth Connor fight, right? Something like that. I don't know if Chandler somehow is going to get Maybe a you saw second fight with Poirier. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, it's it's strange to me that you got three of the best guys literally in the sport. Well, actually, no, 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 no. 
that whole top five and champion of lightweight is arguably one of the best you probably ever see. These six dudes, they're not playing. They're all good. Hell, even number six is good. Number seven's good. Yeah. Number eight's good. Nine, well, the top, solid. Solid. Top eight could be champs of any other time. Yes. It's yeah. been a while since we've said something like this. I think we said that before with, it might have been this division, in fact, and welterweight. Mm-hmm. So still, still, this division, these guys right here, these two divisions that we've been saying for the longest, they're, they're just so talented. But they have a, a lifespan in fighting to like 33, 34. Then it starts to, they start tapering off. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, their lifespan the, the is much Connor, younger. Or no, I'm sorry, the, the, the Chandler, or no, nah, not Chandler. Poirier, Gaethje fight to happen. Three, or three, sorry. That, that's, that's what I was saying. There could be an instant run back of that fight. Just because they're one and one, and now you got a, a entertainment title. He's the universal champion, the uh, BMF, the intercontinental, the whatever champion. You get what I'm saying? Just like in uh, wrestling, mm-hmm. you got this title now. That could actually, I, I'm waiting for the women's BMF title, honestly, because whoever gets that one, oof, man. Well, are they going to? Can you believe that Alexa Grasso is pound for pound number one right now? I was going to get on that as soon as we was done talking about the topics on hand today. Sorry, I got sidetracked. But we'll definitely talk about that because I was shocked earlier when we was in the uh, the weight room. I guess you want to call it war room, whatever, whatever room. The training room, whatever, the lobby. Called the war room. What about that? I was just like, I looked at that and I was like, damn, the disrespect to uh, Wei Li. But let's get back on topic and talk about these lightweights. All right. So, it's going to be. Can we just admit, though? Can we just admit, though, that the BMF belt is nothing but another attempt to bring the Intercontinental Championship to rise? I mean, the, uh, in WWE, the Intercontinental title right now, currently, because they brought in the Universal title, but now I don't even know what they're going They got, like, an undisputed title. I don't know what they're doing. They combine titles. They do all kinds of crazy stuff over there. We just know there's, like, one dude that's the number one guy, and then you got another guy that's number two. Then you got these other titles that are just there for the mid-card guys. You know yeah, what? The Intercontinental uh, Championship used to be the title that, like, once you won that, you're like a lock-in to try to become, like, champion soon. You were about to become, like, the guy to go to. But then it turned into just, eh, here's a belt for you. Yeah, And that's kind of what the BMF is. It's like... You know what it is? This okay. means nothing, but here you go. They The UFC wants to make this a sport, right? It's a sport. We know it's a sport. They've done great with it. But Mm -hmm. I think being under the same umbrella as WWE, they had to bring back the BMF title. Especially with how quick of a... We had two pay-per-views last month. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They they, want to have a title fight on every pay-per-view, right? Unless it's uh, Connor or... Who's the other one that... That has a uh, non-title fight as the main event. Who's the other fighter besides Connor? That, that's still around. Yeah, is Connor the only one that has non-title fights as the main event for pay-per-views? That's still around. Colby. I think so. Who? Oh, we got it. Who do you fight for a uh, non-title fight on a pay-per-view? Not at all. That was the main but Masvidal's retired. I think that was more Masvidal than it was. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Colby. Colby that was that was a uh, Colby versus Masvidal for the for for just a non-title fight. That was the main event, though, right? Yeah, it's because yeah, and Masvidal. that was in Miami. Yeah, I was like, it was in Miami, and it was Masvidal. 
So I think Masvidal was the one, and I he's retired now, so I don't. I think Dustin and Gaethje are probably the other two that have that opportunity, mainly uh, Dustin Poirier. Which shout out to Gaethje for getting on the pound for pound rankings. So, like we was getting at earlier, what happens with Justin Gaethje? Who does he fight next? Hold on, before we move to that, I got a, I got a question. We, while we were just talking about the BMF, I was thinking, what if they did go the route of WME and they made three different belts for every weight class? It's like you had... Stop it. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Hear it out. Because having a, a belt on the line when it comes to a pay-per-view is a big draw for the casual viewer. Like, you, if you had, like, the striking champion or the grappling champion or in, like, including with the BMF and then the actual champion, I think that would be pretty cool, like, for the casual fan. If you had, like... Uh, who's like um in this weight class? This guy's the best striker, and you match him up with another guy who's an excellent striker, and go okay. They're battling out to see who's the best striker in welterweight, or who's the best grappler at flyweight. And they had that belt, like you get the grappling championship, but you're not the actual champion because you can you can be the champion without having any one ace in the hole skill set. You can just be very very well well rounded and never be able to get that belt or even care but if you're not and you're a guy who's just like a pure striker you're in you have something to aim for where you can get that marquee title spot ticket without being able to um compete for the actual title so what you just told me is everyone should watch one fc yeah 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 basically hey, because one hey. fc has grappling muay thai kickboxing all that, and they all have titles for every single one of those, but they actually mean something because you are the champion of the Muay Thai division or the grappling or anything like that. If they did that in the UFC without any of those other events, then they would be meaningless and they would water down the actual true championship, in my opinion. But it's all MMA and UFC, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Well, here, well here, how about this? Uh, I, I'm trying to think of it more like... Um... Kind of like other major sports where you can win a title or you can win, um, you can earn some kind of validation from just doing your job really well, but not win the championship. Like you can be first team all pro or the rushing champion or the passing champion, you know, something like that. Like it's not a dig at them as if like you're beneath the guy who won the Super Bowl. It's more like we, we recognize you for what you're good at. And you get some nice bling because you're good at that. Listen, this is what I'm waiting for. Instead of adding belts, we have all these different promotions, right? Bump it. Let's let's see who's the best. Put your best guys against whoever this other promotion's best guys are. And winner takes the belt. And we'll just go from there. If y'all want to do entertainment value, it's right there. Like, easily. It's a sport. Am I right? It's a sport. Let's mm -hmm. let's do that. Let's have the PFL guy, the Bellator. Well, wait. Bellator is bought out by PFL, right? It's official. Was that official? No, nah, nah, it's, it's, it's happening. No, yeah, it's not. A, not, I, was not I don't think it's set in stone, but it's in the works. Okay. So we got PFL, we got one FC, we got UFC. Ryzen, Ryzen, Ryzen still around. Ryzen still around. Okay, we get, we got all these different promotions. Let's just do like we said, however long ago. Let's just do like the Super Bowl type deal of whatever. Once a year, you get whoever your champion is. Have them ready. And it doesn't even have to be all the champions. It just could be, okay, this year we're doing the lightweight champions to go so, fight. I was thinking about that because we've discussed this multiple times. Yep. 
And I was thinking the only thing holding us against doing that is like the logistics of everything, right? Yeah. But I figure if we did them almost like the Olympics or something like that, where every year we would have certain divisions that would do this, that way we could like separate them. Like uh, this year we're going to do welterweight and middleweight. Next year we're going to do lightweight and bantamweight or whatever. And then every year you'd have like two or three divisions that you do that with, but only will you know every four or five years who all the people are. It's like a lot of logistics because then you got to get venues. You got to get, oh man, you got to time it just right for your your promotion, promotion you get their promotion and it is is a lot of logistics but it can happen but that's People what i'm done. saying like if you separate the divisions it's almost like whoever was the champion of that last year almost preps like the olympics for that for I'd that say year give them six months six months at least yeah six months so okay you know if you win this title on the uh, international fight week Mm-hmm. Super Bowl weekend. Let's make it great. You know what I'm saying? Make it great. Oh, make, yeah. it, make it Super Bowl weekend, and have your heavyweight, and we'll just throw out like the bantamweight or flyweight. We'll get the the big guys and the little guys. You know what I'm saying? Have them go at it because you know the female market's shallow in the UFC right now. You got like two divisions, three divisions or something. I 100% think one would take over the female division, period. Oh, yes. Yes, that's... There's only a few that I feel could, like, hang with some of them 1FC girls. But it would be fantastic if we could have that. But with Brian's thing, like, other titles with BMF, like, every division could have a BMF title. It could be, like, the Intercontinental title, like, back in the day with WWE... You had the the champion, WWE champion, world heavyweight champion, whatever you want to call it, because they made multiple titles now. But you had the main dude. He was the main dude. He had that title. Then you had the next guy, the rising star, that would somehow end up with the intercontinental title. Mm -hmm. And then you go from there. They, They could do that, too. Like, the BMF title could change hands more times than the actual real title. Just because it's just like, oh, it could be instead of having an interim title, you got the BMF title. And that falls in the entertainment category. It checks that off easily. And then you obviously it's like, oh, this is the baddest MF, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He should be fighting the real champion. So now you got title versus title. So... I don't know what would happen to the BMF title if uh, the guy lost. You know what I'm saying? Or won. I think it's already kind of assumed that, like, if you're the champion, you are the baddest in that division. So, like, if right. you take if you beat the the, the BMF, the, you you just prove that you are already the BMF because you you already the champion. And that's why I kind of proposed the whole like grappling champion or. GMF or, and then the uh, striking champion, you can make it an SMF. Who gives a fuck what the name is? But the reason why I said that is because it gives the guys who have a, like a singular skill set a chance to get a recognition for that officially. I mean, they get it unofficially already. Like, we always get the who's the best boxer in the UFC, and they kind of give that moniker to whoever guy at the time is um, displaying the best boxing skills. Or the best grapplers, like you get the guys like Bo Nickel, who are grappling specialists. You already know that they have that ace in the whole skill set, but they don't get an official recognition for it. And I think the BMF, to me, is already watered down. But if you added those other two things to every single division, then you'll have a chance to put a guy who's not the champion on the main event for a title with someone else, and everybody's cool with it. And you know, I don't think it waters down anything as far as the legitimacy of the championships is concerned, because everyone knows the champ's the champ. Like right now, if they did like BMF wise, right, everyone knows Islam's the man. Right? Absolutely. Well, no one's, no one's them casuals, I don't know. 
Well, they, they people that saw Gaethje Poirier didn't see that thinking that like, okay, well now we think that Gaethje's going to just run over Islam and he's the real oh. champ. He's the uncrowned king. They might think that he has a shot. Oh, they might think that he has no. a shot. Oh, no, no, no way. No one thinks oh, no. that Gaethje. No one oh, thinks no. that. Oh no. Wait, does anyone here think that? I don't think that. Gaethje has a shot at uh, becoming champ? No, of course he has a shot. He's um, a contender. But I'm saying, do you think he will be a favorite going into that fight? A favorite? No. You think he'll be a significant dog going into that fight? I wouldn't say significant dog. Depends on Oliveira. Wait, wait. Is is, Is significant more than three to one? Two to one, I feel significant. Okay, so he's definitely going to be more than two to one dog. That's fair. I mean, it depends on how well Oliveira Islam goes. Hey, if wait, you wait. have a, go ahead, John. Go ahead. If it's a tight fight, if Oliveira has Islam hurt at any time, then you have, I think, Gaethje has a better chance. You know what I mean? But if you see him submit him like he did last time. Then Gaethje doesn't. You know what I mean? It because I, I think that if Gaethje were to look at, study, and it, implement Volk's plan, he has a chance to beat Islam, uh, like a reasonable chance. Okay, so is okay. Is why this is so. I, I <laughs> I'm trying to find a way to justify thinking that. Gaethje has any shot at all with Islam. Because I don't think so. I think Islam just takes him down, squeezes him out. Checkmate. No, it's no no big it's not even gonna be a much of a fight at all. Um however, like I think the point I was trying to make with the whole BMF thing is no one is looking at those titles as a a watering down of the actual champion. That's all I'm saying. I don't think someone getting that when Jorge Masvidal won it from Diaz, no one was looking at Masvidal like, okay, now you're gonna wreck Usman. Like, but just, they did. That's why they gave him the fight again. Well, I don't think they thought that he was gonna wreck him. Not the odds makers. Not the people who were. I don't think Masvidal thought that. I think he just made it more appealing to give him the shot, given the fact that his career has been mostly mid besides those things. It gave it like a, 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 a legitimacy to where like, all right, you know what? Maybe, maybe he can. And that's why I think it'd be cool to have those other titles. Cause if you get a guy who's a grappling champion, but he's going up against the, the actual champion, who's a legitimate striker. They're like, look, like he might have a chance to beat him. Even though, like, the, the real champion is probably miles ahead of him, it might get, add a little bit more intrigue to it, and a little bit more like there's something more on the line than the title, which just sound, sounds weird. But they, when you're building the story, that does add a little bit more um, eyes to the screen, because when you have like the built-in storyline of okay, this guy beat me twice in kickboxing. And now he's fighting me for the championship. It's more than just the title on the line. It's legacy on the line, too. There's redemption on the line. There's revenge on the line. There's a lot of things going on besides just the changing of the belt. So I think when you have a guy who's like a decorated striker, like say the guy like Wonder Boy, right? He wins the striking championship of 170. And now he's, you know, 42 years old or whatever, and he's going up against Shavkat. For the welterweight title, yes, I gave Shavkat the title two years from now, whatever. But he's going up against Shavkat, and now he's otherwise. Most people be like, hey, you know what? Like Shavkat's going to run him over. However, Wonder Boy is a really good striker, and he, I mean, he is the striking champion, and it adds a little bit more, like I don't know, a little more sauce to the actual championship. Then I think it would ever take away from it. Would it? I think what it would accomplish is it would give more belts out, like the WWF or WWE, what they call it, WME. I'm not sure what they call it now. But it will give out more belts, and the more belts they have, the more they can have non-champion guys on the main ticket. 
that's it. That's, that's, I was just thinking about that would be that that would be. I think that's more feasible and more um, like we can see that happen way faster than any kind of cross promotion collaboration for a big end of the year Super Bowl type dance. Because even in the sports that did have that, like NFL and NBA, it's only two conferences, and they already play in the same um, country. So it's, it's the so the and even that was it took a merger for that to happen for NFL. So if there's going to be some kind of MMA merger between one FC and PFL and then UFC, which I don't ever see happening in our lifetime. If there was some kind of merger, and they just say we're all just one umbrella, we're all just some kind of, we just call ourselves MMA and it's a professional sport. They would all be called UFC at that point. We've already seen those mergers happen. Right. If that happened, then yeah, maybe we can get that that cross promotion thing where you're the rising champion or you're the PFL champion, and at the end of the year we're going to match you up against the UFC champion. Maybe. But other than that, nah, man, I don't see that happening. That's I think that's so far out in fantasy land that only we can only do that on a video game, right? Uh, in, the, in the near future. I mean, I don't hate it. I, I I would love it to be like boxing, who whoever can fight whoever. But at the same time, we've seen what that's done to boxing, also, where it just waters down pretty much everything except you want to see one or two fights a year. Or at least in my opinion. That's how I am. You need that many belts to keep interest, though. Um, and if you do, you just see the intro, right? Because like, that's a real cheap way to have a belt on the line, but not to have it devalue so much, right? And that mm-hmm. I think if you have like the interim belts and you start using them as like number one title fights, because, like, okay, so if, if there, there's like an, uh, we switched out BMF and we made this an interim title belt. So we know exactly who Islam is fighting after Oliveira, or Oliveira is fighting after Islam, right? They're trying to get rid, rid of uh, interim belts, though. They're trying to do away with that. <clears throat> Which I think is a mistake if they want to have more titles and more headliners, right? Because if you just use interims as a way of getting your number one contender sorted out, you know what I mean? It... it I think there's like uh, enough pros to it. I think they've already tested those waters, and that's the reason why they want to get rid of the interim belts is because they feel like a lot of the media, at least, has said that the interim belts have watered down the meaning of it, that they're basically pointless. The interim belts themselves are just pointless. They're all number one (laughs) contender fights. We already know they're number one contender fights. So what is the point of an interim belt? And that's why they're trying to get rid of them. How many like, right now, champions yeah. have there been, though, that have not been champion, though? Quite a few. Exactly. So I feel they need to get rid of it. They yeah. should just call it number one contender, like they got the next title shot. They can do that. It's more common for an interim champion to become champion just because the actual champ was out for so long that they just gave him the title then there has been one that wins it you know back in the day we all knew who was uh gonna be fighting for that the the next it was like this is the title shot fight we all knew that you guys remember that right back in the day yes how they used to do it before the interim title was even introduced I believe the interim title was introduced due to, like, uh, the champion being injured, and we needed that, right? Nowadays, Um, it's more so, like, the interim title is just there just because the champion just fought last week. You know what I'm saying? Something something weird, or, like, he just got injured, so now we got to make these two guys fight for the interim belt because we don't have a title fight on the pay-per-view anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how it normally goes. Normally, something like Jamal Hill, he would have got injured. They would have done an interim fight, and then they would have waited for him to come back. We all thought the uh, Jan and Pereira fight was going to be an interim belt, right? Mm-hmm. Or for the vacant title, right? We all thought that. 
But UFC, they took a stand and said, nah, player, this is a three-round fight. It's the co-main event. And I like how they did that. They they stood firm. So I also it's good. I also think that with the interim belts, what happens is if the champ is out longer than they think he should be, or they thought he was gonna be, now they have a contender that's either sitting around for too long, just waiting for that championship fight, or they become irrelevant by the time the champion actually comes back around. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're going to have a Hennon Burrell situation where he's defending the interim belt for three or four fights before he becomes just, oh, you know what? You can just become champ, by the way. <laughs> I think that's what happens with the interim belts. Now, if you did it with the... I, I guess I can see Brian's situation a little bit more because those belts give you something to strive for, but they're kind of meaningless and they don't hold you to something anymore. You're not stuck on a storyline that became irrelevant. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I, I like the, uh, <clears throat> the idea of it, but I mean, obviously this is a thought experiment. This isn't something that's really in the works. I'm just trying to figure out like where they go from the BMF thing. And as far as Gage is concerned, he, excuse me, He's already expressed so much interest in that that um, Conor fight in the past. That he's I think he seems like he's kind of over it, like to the point yeah. where he's like, it, the only way this happens is if they come to me and like, look, here here are the numbers. Do you want to fight? Let's go. Other than that, he's not going to pursue it. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, we got a lot. A lot of options at lightweight right now for title fights because we don't know what's going to happen between Chandler, well not Chandler, but Oliveira and Islam. Going forward with that, if Oliveira wins, will Islam get an instant rematch? Does he deserve an instant rematch? Yeah, he beat a featherweight, pound for pound number one in my books currently. And does he deserve an instant rematch with the guy he just beat? Yes and no. I feel he should go the same road as Charles did. Because Charles literally smoked everybody that his big brother did. Am I right? Mm-hmm. In after a time. Right, yeah. After retiring, like Islam, or not Islam, uh, Habib beat Poirier, right? Gaethje. Who else did he beat? Connor. Chandler. Chandler. No, Charles never fought Connor. But, I mean, he beat the guy uh, that beat I, Connor. I, I so. to, to be, my bad. Yeah, Habib yeah, beat everybody Poirier. that didn't matter. I mean, it's Charles never fought him. I, uh, Charles beat uh, Ferguson. Mm-hmm. That's which uh, saying, Habib Charles. never fought. Habib never fought... Uh, 12 fight win streak or 11 fight win streak uh, Ferguson no he didn't fight that Ferguson he did not fight that Ferguson that was a cursed fight but with that whole thing is like I feel that if you put Gaethje up against Islam it's gonna be one of those things cause I was a firm believer that Gaethje was gonna be the biggest threat to Habib and the uh, Dagestani style of fighting. So if you put him against Islam currently, I'm going to just say this. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, no, it ain't happening. I don't see, uh, I do not see Justin beating Islam. I really don't see it. I really don't see it because Islam proved his striking is better than Habib's in the um, Oliveira Volkanovski fight. fight and the Oliveira fight, especially the Oliveira fight. So I don't see it. I just don't see it. I could be wrong. I'm on. Uh, I'm being recorded, so I don't know. I could be his wrong. His striking is better, but his grappling is not on the same level. Strength-wise, it's, it's good. Not the same. Yeah. 
He's not as strong. <clears throat> not, well, not as good as Khabib's, but compared to the rest of the division, still elite. Yes. I'm, I'm saying he's, he's still elite. But what, if everyone was talking about he's Khabib 2.0, where he has the same grappling as Khabib, and he has striking abilities. If that was happening, he would just be forever champ. But his grappling ability is not on the same level. It's, it's to not. Where wait, I wait, think wait. that there could be cracks in that found eventually soon. I don't, I don't know. I, I think that it, no, while, while it's not on the same level as Habib's, it's so far ahead of everyone else's that it's kind of negligible when you say when you comparing it to like. How to his his grappling to Habib's grappling, his striking so much better that the fact that he can take you to the ground and pretty much have his way with anybody in the division, he is Khabib two point up. I think it's the strength value. That's what I'm saying. I think I think mm-hmm. uh, Habib was stronger, like literally stronger in the grappling department. But I feel the technique is very similar in the same. That's how I feel yeah. about uh, Islam. I agree. So you take that. You, 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 you have that, his ability to just figure him take the fight wherever he wants it. If he wants to make it, keep it standing and he has an edge there, he can do that. If he knows you have holes and grappling and you can't stop anything he's going to do, he can take you to the ground and take have his way with you pretty much. That's, um to me, that is going to be 2.0 because to me, really, that wasn't his thing. To me, it was more like, Everyone in the stadium knows I'm going to try to take you down. Not, not try to take you down. I'm going to take you down. And then the fight's going to be in my world, and there's nothing you can do about it. That was more of a beef thing. Um, Islam doesn't really have to do that. He can do it. He can do whatever he wants. So that's, that's why I was saying that I think he's Habib 2.0. Not because he's a better, he's better than Habib in grappling. He just poses more of a threat than Habib does. Habib didn't oppose. If, if Habib couldn't get you down, and he was forced to be in a boxing match with you, we saw what he was able to do against Al Iaquinta when he was able to just like jab him to death and make Al look like a. I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. But well, Al, we, Al was a realtor. Realtor. He wasn't a fighter then. Well, well, what I'm saying is he he was even though he could sell houses. He couldn't sell the fact that Habib had no stand up. So Yeah. It, Hold up. It, it, he was but it still wasn't that night. They changed the What's whole up? fight card around for that fight. He yeah, was lined yeah. up he to was fight supposed somebody. to fight somehow. So he was a right. fighter. He wasn't a realtor. Well, he, he was doing realty on the side. Well, part he's always done that. Yeah. He's always done that. I was just saying that like even if he was fully dedicated, ten training camps and all, no, look. When you, once they they at the once they got to the point where he knew Habib, it was gonna be a, he fought in a style that made it tough for him to be taken down, and he's all L. I. Quince is an excellent grappler in his own right. He um and there was just a pure stand up kickboxing match between two really strong grapplers. Habib did not look impressive in his stand up. He looked good for Habib's standard, but compared to any other striker. He looked pretty like mid when it comes to like striking. Whereas that's not, that's not the case with Islam. Islam looks really good against other good strikers. Like he looked good against Oliveira, and Oliveira's a really good striker. And he outstruck he outstruck him like it wasn't even close. He made him look like the grappler in that spot. He got I mean dropped and finished. So I what I, what I would I, I guess. That's my only thing about those two. Um, when I say the comparison of him being Habib 2.0, I think he is, personally. I mean, he's everything you would want Habib to have. It, it, he take all the things that Habib has, he has it. When it comes to the grappling department, the control, the submissions. But then he, he, he adds grapp- He adds elite, well, not elite, but excellent striking to that same skill set. So that's why I think he will be champion for a long time. And he is a B2.0 in my eyes. It's hard to argue. I 
How, how long do you think it would? How long do you think his title reign goes? Ooh, man. Beginning of 2024. Uh, go ahead, John. As soon as Volk gets in there, I think he gets it done. I know you love um, Dagestanis. As soon as Volk goes up, he's going to get it. So, John, you're saying, John, you're saying Volk moves to um, lightweight and takes the belt? Yep. Ooh, that's, that's, a, hot, that's a hot take. I like Cause it. Because I... I, I I don't see like Corporia is gonna get owned by Volk. Like, I I just don't see anyone at featherweight getting matching Volk yet. Ooh, 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 that's where we're going. That's where we're going, John. That's where we're going. That's, that's, that's where we're going. Take. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. Okay, so yeah, that's where we're going. We didn't talk about the loser of the BMF title where he goes. We already know where Gaethje's going. He's going to Sizzler either against Charles or Islam. So. That's where we're going. We're going Poirier against Volkanovski. That's where we're going. I think Volk gets the title fight immediately. Oh, he's not fighting nobody. He's just coming back again. Yeah. Like I smoked my whole division. He said, "This is all you got." And now he's back again. He's knocking on the door again. Yeah. That's what you're saying. I, I think so. Who, uh, who else is Volk going to fight? I know who he's going to well, fight. <clears throat> well, I, I can answer those, that question uh, in two parts. The first part is I do not think he runs through Ilya Taporia. I think Taporia beats him, personally. Um, second, second, I think if he did get a matchup at lightweight, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure it will be an automatic uh, champ champ type deal where he fights Islam for the title in a rematch. It's possible, very possible, but I don't think it's probable. The only chance I see that it happening is if he moves, if he vacates the 45, moves to lightweight, takes one fight, wins that fight, and then he'll challenge uh, Islam. And he has the perfect opponent to do it against in the BMF loser, Dustin Poirier. I can also see, I can also see him matching up with Michael Chandler. Yes. I, those were the two exact names that I was thinking myself, to be honest. Those would be the perfect fights for him to move up and put his name right in the hat. If you beat either of those guys, immediate title shot again, run it back, see where it goes. Man. At that point, if he wins, he wins. If he loses, he goes back down to featherweight. Yeah. Or just becomes a journeyman in lightweight. I think... Uh... That Chandler and Volkanovski fight is, that's a great fight. I'd rather see that one over him versus Poirier, like straight up. Agreed. Because, oh my God. I feel Chandler is, he's not underrated because we see where he's going with his things. But I feel he just hasn't got the wins. You know what I'm saying? Because... Mm -hmm. Besides Tony Ferguson and Dan Hooker, okay, he beat them guys. He's having these great fights with all everybody else. With Chandler, or not Chandler, Oliveira. Justin. With Poirier. With Justin. Like, he's having these great fights. Like, all of them. They're not like snooze fest fights. They're like, holy shit, what the hell? Like, you're tuning in for this guy. And he's, he's probably, hey... If they're going to do another person to fight for a BMF title, it's it's got to be him. That's why I was getting that earlier. You got these three dudes in this division that their fights are always bananas. And they all got to fight each other. Like, they're probably going to fight each other at least one more time apiece. Some way in another. Especially if they're going to go competing for a title. If, if Oh, my God. Imagine if, if somebody knocks off Islam. Imagine if Justin knocks off Islam. What happens then? Bloodgates open. Chaos. Yeah. Bloodgates open. That's if Charles doesn't knock off Islam. Because then, 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 because Islam hasn't fought none of these cats yet. He only beat Charles and Volk. That's it. I mean, yeah, he beat the guy that beat the other guys. And he beat the featherweight champion. 
but still. You know what I'm saying? I think y'all are just forgetting the fact that uh, Fazeev is going to come back, win one or two fights this year, and then become champ next year. That boy good. <laughs> no, that's why I'm saying. Early 2024 is when Islam loses his fight. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> late. Maybe late. He's going to win one or two fights and then get that shit. I did want to add, I know um, Mo said um, he, he would rather see Chandler versus Volk. I would much prefer to see Poirier versus Volk. I think that would be a much more entertaining fight. I know we're just on the eve of him getting his head kicked off by Gaethje. But remember, before that, Poirier is one of the toughest, like, well-rounded guys at lightweight. So if you put Poirier in there with Volk, that's a really, really interesting matchup to me. I think that would... I don't know if Volk beats Poirier. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 sold on that. I mean, he might, but Poirier can beat him as well. And that's why I think a move to lightweight, even if he lost to his first fight, since he fought a guy like Poirier, and it became it was a tough. I don't see any one of those guys finishing each other. So I think it would be either Volk just completely dominates him and gets like a a 27 30 type deal, or um, you know, that is a really, really good one and somebody gets a split. And if Dustin split decisions him, I don't think he leaves and goes back to featherweight. I think he can stick around at lightweight and take a few more fights and then, you know, go for that title if he puts together a good string of wins, which he can. I mean, he's extremely talented. Um, mm-hmm. and he's pound for pound the best right now. So I don't think a loss to Poirier would necessarily, like, stifle any title aspirations when it comes to Alexander Volkanovski in the light heavyweight division, the light weight division. I did what you did, Mark. <laughs> I think he get smoked at light heavyweight, but um, <laughs> at lightweight, I think he does have a legitimate shot at uh, competing for the title and having some exciting fights too. Not just um, going for the title and winning it or anything like that, but every matchup that we have him in, that would be a f- fun fight to watch. Anybody in the top 10 of lightweight would be a really fun fight to watch with Alexander Volkanovsky. I agree. Just the entertainment value of it, I think Michael Chandler is big enough to where he will neutralize some of Volkanovsky's wrestling. So it'll be more of just a like muscle man him a little bit. And I think it'll just be more of an interesting chess match than it would be with Dustin Poirier. That's all. Uh, it's, it's more of an entertainment wise I think would be if you want to go skill versus skill Dustin Poirier is the way to go but I think the matchup just is more entertaining between Michael Chandler and him yeah I like I like that fight. I like that fight I like the I like the Chandler fight too I don't know if um, muscle alone is enough to stop the wrestling oh, he might not I, be able I said to water it down basically like hey, well, stifle some well, of well, it wait, wait. let me tell y'all muscle Muscle. This man, Michael Chandler, lifted Dan Dustin, not Daniel, Dustin Poirier off the floor with a suplex when they fought. Off the floor. I don't know that that Did man. Did he do the same thing to Justin as well? Well, well, still that that he he is extremely strong, and that should be a title if we're gonna have new titles. Extremely strong. There should be a title. <laughs> you, you guys remember back most, in the day the with those titles. Athletic? Those stats. The most athletic or... Most athletic. The most uh, no, the uh, improved ground game. Improved ground game. Only the OGs will know about that uh, stat right Iron there. Chin. Iron Chin. Has heart. Has heart. <laughs> improved cardio. Exactly. The, funniest one, <laughs> the funniest one for me is... Uh, Bobby Green's when he was his oldest one, when it like next to fighting style, it just said hood. Oh my hood. god! <laughs> like that was funny as shit. Hey, yeah. thug jitsu is still a thing. Hey man, I, I, I don't know. I I, <clears throat> I just don't think. Um, going back to my comment about um, Michael Chandler, sh- Michael Chandler's strength, and that being a factor in grappling. Yeah, it might. He might not. His strength might prevent him from getting manhandled. 
but technically speaking, he's still him as much. What's up? It doesn't help him nearly as much as it you think. I don't, I don't think it helps him that much at all. I think it just all it does, all it prevents, is him from getting manhandled. You prevent that, but you don't prevent um, a guy like that's excellent at grappling and chain grappling from stopping. That, that's, being strong won't stop that. It'll slow it down a little bit, maybe in the beginning. But mm -hmm. if you're using explosive power and muscle to stay, to, to, um, to stop takedowns and to stop grappling, you're gonna gas. And then you then you're just gonna get like dominated. I still think Volk wins that fight. I just thought it was an entertaining fight, and make it more entertaining instead of Volk just taking him down. Because I think that Volk could probably take down Dustin a lot easier than he can take down Mo Justin. Or I mean, uh, Volk could probably uh, Michael Chandler easier, and then it'll just go from there. Just be a slugfest mostly. Wait, you said you think you said I'm oh, sorry, you said you think Volk can take down Michael Chandler easier than No no, I think he can take down Dustin easier than he can take down Michael Chandler. What makes you believe that? Like I said, I think you just get out muscle him for a little bit in the first couple of rounds, and Michael Chandler's a first two round fighter anyways. That's where he's gonna throw his heavy bombs and his pressure anyways, so that's where you're gonna get all the entertainment. I don't think it actually lasts the whole fight. I think Volk finishes him in the third, at the beginning of the third. That's just how I see it going. But, as I said, it was more just an entertaining fight to me. Yeah, I, I like it. As an entertaining fight, I like it. I like it as a matchup. As far as it being a, a good fight for the matchup, I like that a lot, too. Um, the only thing I would say <clears throat> when it comes to... Uh, Volk versus Chandler, I think the striking is going to be heavily weighted toward Volk in, in that matchup. I think um, Volk's footwork's better. Volk's angles are better. His uh, shot selection is better. Chandler does have good power, and um, he has decent movement skills. But I think he'll just get um, outclassed in the stand-up, whereas with Poirier, I don't think he'll get outclassed in the stand-up. I think that can be a really, really entertaining fight. And I don't I don't, I don't necessarily believe he'll be able to dominate um, Poirier in the grappling, either. Poirier is not an excellent grappler when it comes to, um, you know, defending certain submissions, mm -hmm. but he's, he's really good at, stay, at, tick, at taking away um, guys' abilities to just come straight forward and take him down. And he can yeah. also fight and get back up. He's decent at uh, chain wrestling and stopping guys from being able to completely dominate it when it comes to just purely putting him to the ground. All of Dustin's ground finishes have come when he's been hurt, knocked down, and then submitted. Rarely have you seen Dustin just get straight ran through, ragdolled, and then submitted. So, like, we, we, we the same way we saw Kevin Holland just get run over by Chimaev, that doesn't happen to Dustin. Like, Dustin gets in a scrap, and then he might get hurt and then, you know, put down, put uh, get a choke put on or something like that, or someone might take his back and he can't recover. And that can happen. Um, and that can happen to anyone. So I, I, I want to see what happens with Volk and what he decides, because uh, he's, he's probably, probably the best guy in the world. That fight he put on with Islam was, I thought he won. Personally, I thought he beat Islam um, the first time they fought, but you know he didn't get the, the judge's decision. He lost on paper, and in reality, on the record, is a loss. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna want that back. And his only path to doing that would be to either get a champ champ fight with Islam, and with that, he has to wait in line because he, Islam already has a fight booked. Um, He's Knocking on the door. So I don't think he'll leapfrog any one of those two guys. Um, and then you got, you know, the lightweight division is completely stacked. Like you said, you got uh, Zayev and a host of others who are all going to make a claim in the next few fights. So this is legitimacy when it comes to make it, getting that um, title run. And in his own division, he got guys nipping at his heels. Um, Volk does. So 
he'll have, he's gonna have to make a decision of like, do I want to stay at featherweight and continue to reign and be the dominant champ, or am I gonna go chase after uh, getting that Islam fight back and becoming the one of the, the, the cement himself as the greatest of all time by winning two titles, two different divisions, being pound for pound the best, and having a, a really immaculate record. All right, guys. Uh, let's go 10 minutes with something real quick. Not that. Not my dog yelling at me. But um, we got... We got... This... Bantamweight title coming up, coming soon. So... We got uh, Al Jermaine versus uh, Sean O'Malley. What happens with this fight? And could this potentially be Al Jermaine going up to featherweight? That's what I'm getting at. Because we, we know Volkanovski, he got one more fight, literally. He got one more contender. Because they're not going to do a fourth max fight. We got one more contender with, uh, what's the name? He's good. He's good. Tapuria, right? Tapuria. Yeah, Tapuria. Yeah, Tapuria. He looks yeah. like he should be playing freaking soccer for uh, Spain or something, right? This dude clean cut. Like, he looks fresh. He's out here chiseled. He's doing the right things. He's smoking everybody. Honestly, if we want to go the entertainment route, he should be fighting Patty Pimlet. And he'll smoke him. He could fight him at whatever weight. They could fight at 170. I got uh, Tapuria. That's just me. Mm-hmm. But besides that, if Al Jermaine goes up to featherweight, does Volkanovski actually truly vacate? Or do we see something crazy? Do we see something crazy? Do we see a possible another double champ? Pending if he beats uh, Sean O'Malley, because that's a whole different podcast in itself. Um. Okay, to start from the first one, uh, I think this is how this is how I see that fight going. I see all Joe, um, being on the outside for a little while and getting, giving um, O'Malley a little bit of confidence in his striking, which he has already immense confidence in his striking. But um, I see Aljo letting that play out a little bit and then taking him down, backpacking him, choking him out, and winning. I see choke. I see choke as a method of victory. Yes, I agree. I would even call that probably early third round. Yep. I see that fight. I don't, I don't see. Um, I, I mean, yeah, of course he can get knocked out. Anybody can get knocked out. Um,. That's very possible, but I, I just don't really see much in the way of Sean Witt beating him. I mean, Sean can, like I said, he can knock him out. Um, all has been knocked out before. Juan Marais put him on, put him on um, airplane mode, so that. Um, so it's possible. I just think that this version of Aljo. Is much more sharp, very very technical, excellent grappler. He's had championship experience, like championship rounds, uh, many championship rounds against very very tough opponents. We haven't seen O'Malley really in very many rough five round wars at all. Only one was a pure was purely on five rounds. Three, three rounds. Hey, has he fought a grappler? Like a legit grappler? No, right? Cheeto? Do you do you consider I'm saying do you consider Cheeto Vera a legit? No, no, grappler? I feel yeah. he's more well rounded, more than anything. Okay. And so I in feel, that case uh, Peter Jan's good at uh takedown defense. He's like uh Aldo at one thirty five. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Mm-hmm. So No, not grapplers. Yeah. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Slow down, slow down. You're saying Pure Jan is in the same mold as Aldo with strike with grappling defense? Grappling defense. I agree, I agree with that. What's okay. what's what's all that? So what, what, what are we missing? They're both the same. Uh, they're both Muay Thai guys who use their wrestling skills no, no, in no, reverse. No. I'm I'm putting uh, who uh, Sean O'Malley fought against. 
Pretty young. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he hasn't fought against somebody that could grapple. Oh, or offensive. Scoring, yeah, offensive grappling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's well-rounded, so I don't know who Sean O'Malley fought. That's somebody that's going to grapple him and do things to him that he don't like. No, they've always given him favorable matchups. The only uh, unfavorable matchup they've given him were like Jan. Yeah, and that's only because Jan was so highly ranked. It wasn't like the stylist. It wasn't stylistically an unfavorable matchup. Mm-hmm. It was just more like Jan's got more experience. He's a much more um, decorated fighter. Like he's in that top five of the division, and he's been he's former champion. Uh, has lots of championship experience, so that's something that Sean like lacks. He didn't have much uh, top five experience. That's that, but uh, no, I don't think he's part of anybody that's a grappling expert. Zero. I just looked at his record, and he doesn't have any grapplers. Period on there. Right, and the fact that he didn't take this fight immediately um, makes me kind of worry. I think he might he they, his camp might know they need more time to get ready to uh, for whatever Aldo's going to put out there. All Joe, not Aldo. I, I mean, up. he was ducking uh, Cejudo, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Cejudo told him he sucked to his face. And what's funny about that is Cejudo could have been the opponent had Cejudo beaten All Joe in that tight. Uh, I mean, that's a big. That's a tall glass to drink coming back after not fighting for how long? Especially as a, you know that's not your weight class, yeah. bro. You know that's not your weight class. Well, it's, it's not just that. It's not his weight class because that's one factor. But also, he just hadn't been in a fire. Like, all those guys have been. Yeah, exactly. Fighting, you know, fighting. he took two years off or something? Three years off? Right. Something like that. Mm. Well, his you know, last fight was pandemic think- time. He fought in I don't really believe in ring rust. I don't really think that's a thing. But I think that like what you do miss is competing at a high level against other guys who are doing the same thing. Yeah. And having that mindset of always on, where you when you're retired or whatever, you're switched off. You're not you're not fighting. You're not looking at film and against possible opponents who are well, already he was, competing. Though. He was, but not for him. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not, not to this intensity of you being in the fight. Yeah, it wasn't for him. It was right. for his. Uh, he was for his trainees, coaches, yeah, training partners, yeah. his gym mates. Yeah, that makes sense, and yeah. that, that that never goes away. He was in the game was, though, but he wasn't in the game himself. It was right. Almost three he was years to he was coach. to the day. He was coach. He was coach. Right, and he's not going through training camps and fight camps and then fighting somebody. Yeah. On a regular basis, and all Joe was, O'Malley was, Kiryan was like those guys are in the fire still. So if you go, I mean, you might be able to take a fight with a guy, you know, that's also just a, uh, you know not a top five guy, someone in the bottom uh, ten to fifteen in the division, maybe somebody in the bottom twenty. But we talk about fighting for the championship, the cream of the crop. Like you better be on point. You got to be crispy. A few mistakes here or there, and it's not even a fight. So what I'm aiming at is, guys, what do you guys see uh, Aljo versus Volkanovski? Because that's what we have as the current two Bantamweight and Featherweight champions. That's what I was getting at. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, hmm, I would say... <clears throat> okay, um, that's interesting. Because I think, while I think... Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. The reason why I'm saying this is because Aljo said this is his last fight at Bantamweight, but I don't believe it. I believe if they present him with the opportunity to fight Volkanovski at featherweight to be a double champ, just to have that, you know, he I feel he's more of a legacy type of dude. Like, yeah, I did this. He'll, he'll go up, fight uh, Volkanovski for the title. If he wins, he'll vacate the title for his boy. What's his name? Uh, Mirab? Mirab, right? Yeah. He'll he'll do that. You know, well, either way, he's going to go up to featherweight regardless. 
win or lose, according to him. So, let's say he wins, and he goes up to fight Volkanovski. What happens there? That's what I was getting at, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think if he, he fought Volk, um, I, I think Volk would have the edge in the striking department. I think he would, because <clears throat> it makes his footwork, his movement. All Joe would have the edge, obviously, with the length and the outside game being, you know, um, having more reach and all that. However, well, we got to we talk about Volk though. His Volk. reach is scary long for his height. Yes, like, course, he has, it is. It is very long for his height, but all Joe's long as well, and all Joe's taller. So, fact on that actually is, Aljo's reach is seventy one. And Volk's reach is actually 71.5. Wow. Oh. And you yeah, know height-wise, Aljo is 67 and Volk is 66. They're very comparable, to be it's honest. Equal. It's just about and, equal. And, and Volk is, is a stronger, I think. He is more... Because, I mean, he was able to go toe-to-toe with one of the best lightweights. And that lightweight is known for hot, coming in heavy. Right, cutting a lot of weight. So if he's able to go against, you know, a lightweight like Islam, I don't know what a bantamweight like Aljo is going to do, especially when there there's so much parity with their size. Right, I, I think that <clears throat> the, the I think Aljo is a much more um, accomplished. I think Aljo has an edge in grappling. He would have, I, I think he has, I think he had an edge in grappling in that matchup, and just because um, he might be able to. Out muscle him in certain spots. I think that he can be submitted, by Aljo. So I mean, because Volk had his back forever, but it's a difference between uh, not Volk. Sorry, Islam had Volk's back for a good bit. But if right. Aljo in that same spot, that fight is finished. And he also, I mean, he's also comp- in a compromised spot against Brian Ortega when he had him in that guillotine and his head turned to like, a cherry. He didn't tap, but Aljo finishes him if he gets there. I don't think I don't think Volk will let it get there because I, I think we've seen a that more evolved Volk in the Yair fight where he sees where his opponent's strong and he takes it to another place, right? Because nice, before stuff, he was just a, is what you're saying. Like he was a, he was mm-hmm. a counter fighter, right? He was a counter striker, and he was very good at it. He proved how. Good he was against Max three in the Islam fight. I think that kind of hurt him a bit. But just being count- he should have If he had gone forward earlier, he might have had more of a chance because he had a better more more in the gas tank in that fifth round than Islam did. So I don't know. I think Volk can get it done. I agree against with you. I, I I totally agree with you, and that's why I'm hoping this fight happens. I think Volk can get it done, too. I think the more interesting fight... I know Aljo wants to fight for titles, but I think the more interesting fight would have been Brian Ortega versus Aljamain. I think that's a... I think that's a quite interesting fight, to be honest. Uh, I do, too, actually. Actually, their striking is, like, very similar. Comparable. Very similar, very similar. Grappling. Their grappling is is very top-notch. So, that, that matchup, to me... It's very it interesting because it's like, yeah, these guys got great striking. Oh my god, my dog! Their their striking is. It can be seen. It looks good, right? When you see it, but their grappling top notch. So yeah, I agree with that fight. That's a good one. I didn't even think of that one. Just because That's Ortega's been uh, MIA for so long because of the injury. He just went out on a breakup, too. Come on, calm down. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Just because. Yeah. I'm not going to get into that. That's their business. That's uh, their business. I don't know what, what's going on with uh, Ortega and Cortez. That's their business. Uh, oh, no. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I do think that Volk has a legit shot to beat all Joe. I don't think this fight is. I, don't, I think that fight would be a flip, like uh, um, like a one fifteen, one fifteen type deal if they did match up. I just see that I I see well, paths to victory for both guys, and I don't know necessarily if um, 
that's what Aljo would um, go for. Like, if he beats O'Malley, I think he does move up to featherweight. He said he is. But also, right. I think, he, I think he vacates. If he beats O'Malley, I think he vacates the title, moves, moves to featherweight. But I don't think he gets an auto title shot. I believe he does. I mean, maybe. He, he might. He might. He might. But then again, like, what happens if um, Volk moves to lightweight before that happens? Ooh, him and, versus Holloway? Ugh. Right, or or like some, yeah, or someone like um, Poria, someone like uh, there's, a, there's a lot of matchups at um, Featherweight. I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, you gotta beat Holloway to get a real title shot. I like a lot of those matchups for Aljo though. Top five matchups, anyone in the top five, I like those matchups. They're all good. Yeah, they're actually they're all good. good. Most of them are coin flips. But yeah, Aljo moving up the featherweight is tremendous for that division because it's kind of it's getting kind of stale because you got Volkanovski smoking everybody, and then you got you got Max out here just like oh this is your contender no you thought you had a contender every time you know what I'm saying like. Yair Rodriguez, they try to sweep that shit under the rug that he never fought Max. They're like, no, nah, he ain't fight Max. This is the most dangerous guy to fight Alex Volkanovski. Bullshit. He just <laughs> lost to Max Holloway. What are you talking about? Like, that shit wasn't that long ago yet. Like, this shit was like 10 years ago. Come on, man. They also tried to hide the fact that he was getting his ass whooped by Korean Zombie before he pulled off that elbow. That was the most immaculate elbow in the history books ever. Yeah. But like I'm saying, like, come on, man. I know UFC, you could promote some shit, but come on, bro. I seen it. Yeah, he had a good fight with Max. His foot looked like a balloon, but this boy got taken down by Max Holloway. Who does that? Not Max. He fighting smart. <laughs> he fucked up. But that's how I see it. Like, featherweight division is just like... Here we're at. Like... Yeah. You don't got, you don't, it's it's kind of similar, like, uh, with Anderson, when he was just getting fed middleweight after middleweight and smoking them and smoking them and smoking them. It's kind of like Volkanovski now, except for he had a lot more tougher competition with his number two guy compared to everybody else. Well, and also, Anderson went to 205 and had success three times. He mm-hmm. definitely did. He made so, uh, four in his look bad. Boris Griffin, Stephen Bonner, James Irvin. I mean, out of those three, one of them became a champion, which was crazy to me. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Um, that's what I'm saying. So like, I don't know if um, is that's why I want to see Islam um take a fight at lightweight before just going for the title because like it was never a ch- shot. There was never a time where um Anderson was like the middleweight champion. It was like oh, I'm going to take on John Jones. He took other fights at 205 that were interesting, and then you know. Had he wanted that fight with John, it was the, it was there. But I think Volk should take other fights. Just move to the lightweight division and see what happens. You can always go back to the featherweight if you want. He's the king there, you know what I mean? So, yep. I, I, I want to see him just go. I want to see him into the lightweight. I'm cur- I think he can be champion. I think he can beat Islam, personally speaking. You know, it's the crazy thing is uh, also Max wants to move up lightweight, too. I mean, I Max say, is like what, like thirty one, thirty two, or something. Like Max is young. Yeah, he's young. He's on the good side of thirty, I believe. You know, but he's I mean? on the bad side of uh, mileage. Yeah. Oh. F- all right. All right. Yeah, he's thirty one. All right. Before we go on this long tangent and make this podcast extra long, because we already, <laughs> we already damn near two hours. We're gonna uh, zip it up. And zip it out. Zip it out. Take care, boys. Zippity doo da. Bye bye. <laughs>